Hi, this is Roger McGuinn, and you're listening to KDRT. In Davis, California. Well, welcome back to Davisville. I'm Bill Buchanan, and we're back on the air this week after taking a week off to adjust to the temporary closure of the KDRT studio because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This program today, by the way, might sound a little different because I'm recording it with my computer from home over the internet without the benefit of the studio or the sound engineer. Uh, but we'll keep the spirit of the show intact, even if the sound is a little different and we don't have our usual music for a while. And as, as always, thank you for listening. Well, my guest today uh, is Wendy Weitzel. She is the comings and goings columnist for the Davis Enterprise. She has been writing about merchants in Davis for many years and has lately, to say the last few weeks, been focusing on how they're faring amid the coronavirus pandemic that has curtailed or even closed businesses throughout the town. Uh, she's joining us remotely today from her home. So, Wendy, thank you for talking with us today. Thanks for having me. Um, all right, so you write about Merchants and Davis, and I should mention your, uh, your writing is also available online. Uh, I read it in the Enterprise, but people can find it on Facebook and, and elsewhere. Uh, anyway, obviously this is a tough time for everybody. Um, today, we're focusing on the Merchants and Davis. Um, you know, they bring life to the town. They make downtown attractive. They bring revenue to the city. Uh, and most of all, of course, their friends and neighbors who are trying to get through the pandemic like the rest of us. I'd like to start with just an overall question. Um, you talk to a lot of them, uh, you write about them. What's your overall sense of how they're doing? Well, I think they're all struggling, every, every one of them, whether their business is open or, or temporarily closed and worrying about the future. Oh, I mean, we all are, but uh, it's it's a really tough time to have a small business and trying to pay rent and uh, um, you know keep your employees paid and that kind of thing. I I, I really feel for them. Yeah, um, and I get a sense that it probably changes week to week, like it is for all of us. Uh, you know, something that seemed I don't know unusual at first starts to seem a bit more normal, even if it's sort of fundamentally weird. Um, you're writing um, mostly about retail, right? Right, retail and restaurants um, for the most part. And, and in fact, I think you said we were talking about setting this interview up that you focus more on the restaurants these days, um, I suppose, because that's one of the big questions people have is if they're open or not. That's, yeah, that's what I tried to start doing because uh, really only it's, uh, as far as retail, only the essential businesses are open and um, and I do talk about them when I can, uh, but it, you know it's trying to spread the word of what restaurants are still open and and um, so people can go support them. That that was my main focus at, and has been for the last uh, three weeks. Yeah, and in fact, you're writing your column more frequently. I understand temporarily. Yeah, it was cut down to every other week a couple of years ago, but now I'm writing every week and um, the enterprise gratefully is supporting that effort because they think it's important to, to support businesses and let people know uh, how, how they can do that. Yeah. Uh, so how do you, do you work? Do you uh, check in with the businesses each week or I imagine some contact you probably if they want to get word out about something? Uh, how do you go about your job? Well, I, I mean, I live here and I work here and I shop here. So uh, that's my key advantage. But I also, um, since I've been doing this column since 2001, I get a lot of tips, which are super helpful. Uh, and then I just, when I see something, I take make note of it and I do you know, quite a bit of emailing and calling and checking in and just walking around if I can, uh, which is less lately, but <laughs> calling yeah. and checking. Um, it, and that's, that's how I get my information. Yeah. Um, so one of the questions, of course, is, you know, how to help businesses in, in a time like this. One of the obvious ways is to, to patronize them as much as possible. You've written about this. Um, do you have a sense of how that's working or are there other ideas, maybe things that people could do to, uh, to help businesses through this? The ones obviously that they want to support. Well, if uh, my suggestion is to 
call and check to see if they're open. And um, if not, you know, or check their social media, check to see if there is a way you can support them, even if their brick and mortar store is closed. There's so many stores like, um, you know, the wardrobe uh, women's clothing store just start, started offering Zoom personal shopping. So you can um, meet with the owner and, and kind of almost virtually try things on and she will help you pick things and deliver them uh, uh, in a clean way. Um, Avid Reader is selling, is, you know, really launching into an online operation where they, and they're selling a bunch of puzzle, puzzles and toys and, and books and things like that. So they're adapting uh, to the situation. Fit, um, fitness centers are doing online uh, classes, but uh, you, you can also support them by uh, buying gift cards. There's uh, some different methods you can do that. Uh, there are there's a Dapit app that allows you to buy uh, gift cards to local restaurants, but and all kinds of different stores. You could buy downtown Davis gift cards that would go to you know folk, any of those downtown merchants. Uh, so those variety are, yeah. of different ways, you know. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, in your column in early April, and we're talking on I lose track of days. We're talking on Wednesday, April eighth, I think. We're recording this in advance to, to air. Uh, but in your column in the Enterprise a few days ago, uh, you wrote about people scolding merchants for staying open. Uh, you mentioned someone even calling the police on on people at the farmers market. I don't know if it was you know, on the market itself. But of course, the market's considered an essential business. It can stay open. You know, I've been there. I've seen the lines. I've seen people keeping distance and all that. You know, I'm wondering, are, are you hearing about a lot of things like this? Or is it mostly just a few cases? Or what's your sense of that? I'm seeing a rise in trend. And I think other people are too, whether it's against businesses or just in people in general, people are agitated and they're nervous and they're anxious. And so naturally um, it's hard not to lash out and, and jump the gun, but I think we've got to dial back on our judgment and shaming and worrying about police, policing others. We need to um, have some empathy and, you know, we don't know the story, everybody's stories. They, you know, somebody might be at the grocery store just buying a few things, but they might, and that might be their second or third time this week, but maybe they're shopping for an elderly person or, you know, we just, there's yeah. all this negativity right now on social media and elsewhere. And I think we need to be a little more forgiving each other, less judgmental and stop. It's just adding to our own anxiety, I think. So, yeah, I mean, there certainly is a lot of anxiety out there. And of course, I suppose if someone sees something that is, you know, genuinely counter to the spirit and, and the of law of the, the ordinance, but, but that's not really what you're talking about here. And uh, no, I, I was getting a lot, I'm getting a lot of emails even, um, or, talk on my Facebook comings and goings Facebook page with people trying to shame businesses for being open or such and such shouldn't be doing this and that. And they, they're probably, then they're, and they're talking about like essential businesses and that, yeah, that the, we, the Davis farmers market got a um, message from the chief of police saying, that, you know, they had multiple reports of people wanting to shut down the farmer's market and they, the farmer's market's taken all kinds of precautions. So, and it's an essential business. It's, it's you know, so I, I just, yeah. In fact, I think that one's uh, farmer's markets in general are called out specifically in at least a lot of the orders I've seen that say that these are essential businesses because they sell food. And well, in certified farmer's markets, the, they've, yes. that's actually been laid out by the governor um, and the health departments that they are exempt. I, I've seen, as someone who you know lives in shops in Davis myself, it seems to me that in the last few weeks I've seen uh, businesses being uh, more, I don't know, sort of deliberate. Uh, people are probably getting better at their game uh, in terms of uh, you know clearly delineating where you can step. You know the plexiglass shields going up at grocery stores, uh, things like that. I mean, it strikes me that people are trying to work within the system and you know make it make it function the way it needs to. The, the hours for uh, senior shoppers at the grocery stores, you know, another right. example of that. 
Uh, yeah, I've been trying to um, list those those special kind of hours in my column as well because they sometimes have been changing or stores have been adding them. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of creativity. I guess is is part of the point uh, at a time like this. People find ways. You're mentioning businesses finding ways to do things online. You know, um, it has occurred to me that in some respects maybe we're fortunate that this didn't happen five or ten years ago because the online connectivity is a lot better than it would have been, well, if you go back farther. I can't imagine doing this with dial-ups. Right. Uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to, to uh, well, even what we're doing, talking over computers. Uh, this mm -hmm. is for a radio show, but it's entirely outside of the radio station right now. Uh, and, and we're, you know, we're used to maybe getting delivery more than just, of more than just pizza these days, of, of food and groceries. And so it's nice that there's, that system already built in yeah. already. You know, I, um, I imagine merchants would be like anybody else. Most of us are thinking pretty short term these days, just trying to get through the day or the week or maybe looking ahead a little bit. Um, I do wonder uh, how much they're thinking about what lies ahead. I mean, there's this thought that uh, uh, the, the change that we're all going through right now, learning to do things online, uh, well, this will take it out of retail altogether, but I've heard people talking about, well, with so many people working at home, it sort of changes the view people have about working at home, you know, that maybe that there are ways that more people could work remotely and still be productive and so on. You know, an employer or institution that might have been more suspicious of that idea before, uh, maybe is less so once they have to send their workforce home and find that it still is performing. Um, Although I've always been working from home, or no, well, for the last, you know, <laughs> 10 years or so, and uh, now that my whole family's at home, it's not as conducive, but that's all right. <laughs> well, that's matter. true. I guess there's a couple of things there. One's just the tactic, and then one is the conditions. And yeah, uh, sharing a home with people who are trying to go to school and, and work and all, you know, little cabin fever can set in too. Uh, but I guess my point is this may reset some things. And, uh, you know, you've got retailers now who are doing more things online at the moment. That's kind of their, their lifeline for some of them is, you know, selling things uh, online for curbside delivery or delivery in person or takeout meals. But and I think people, although we naturally were used to shopping online and Amazon is so popular, I think we need to take a breath and look at if we're buying something on Amazon, is there a chance that maybe we could support a local retailer? We actually have the time to do the shopping and the research and right now. So we know that, I mean, I can easily predict that Amazon's still going to be around when COVID quarantine is over, but many of these local businesses might not. So anything we can do to help them, even if it's buying their products at the grocery store or uh, or ordering directly from their website or buying them a gift card or whatever, buying a gift card to, to support them. I think that's an important thing we need to acknowledge, uh, it, be really thoughtful of where we're spending our money. Yeah. Uh, just do a quick station ID. Uh, this is Bill Buchanan. The show is Davisville. On KDRT LP 95.7 FM in Davis, California, we're talking with Wendy Weitzel, who is a freelance writer. Well, she's a variety of things. Uh, used to be managing out of the Davis Enterprise back in the day. Uh, and we're talking about um, uh, basically retail merchants in Davis, because that's something she writes about in, in her column. Uh, well, yes, to your point about online, I would imagine that... Um, you know, maybe to the degree that we've thought online is Amazon, online is somewhere far away. Maybe it changes a little bit now if, if people can think about uh, local merchants also being online. I guess I'm not sure where I'm going with this. It just strikes me that um, there is a reshuffling going on and maybe that creates opportunities uh, for local merchants, either out of necessity or simply out of insight. And uh, I don't know if you're hearing much along these lines. Again, it's early, we're all, I'm sure they are too, still in the coping stage. But at some point, people are gonna start looking ahead and I think that might be interesting to see what, what ideas emerge. Um, right, I, saw, I uh, was uh, part of the Downtown Davis 
business associations um, marketing committee meeting last week and one of the um, merchants uh, uh, shoe shoe who owns shoe shoes clothing uh, it's a women's retail boutique she says she's made the changes she's making are ones are, aren't just knee-jerk reactions they're ones that are going to help her later setting the things she's trying to set up online uh, will help her later and she's trying to think of it in that perspective that they're investments in the future not just investments of saving my skin right now and so that's uh, that one of the things she was doing is trying to really push this um, local app called niche that helps you shop locally it helps you uh, like if I wanted to buy a you know a white sweater and I was looking for to buy it locally I could put it out on this app and basically other local merchants are, would almost bid or or show what you have what they have available in my size or something like that so yeah. Yeah. that sounds creative uh, yeah. that, that, that sounds like a, a, a creative response to it um, uh, well, you know, and uh, if if people are thinking more deliberately now about shopping in Davis, you know, in other words, you can you you start to value what you risk losing, and maybe that'll be part of the change too when the whole thing is over. Uh, one yeah, thing that's, that's I've, I've been waiting for people to do that with newspapers as well. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, yes, I have a newspaper background as well, of course, as you know, and yeah, they're a whole different category, um, and of course. The enterprise is, uh, you know, facing all this too. They're not strictly speaking a retailer, I guess. If I recall back in the day, they used to be considered factories because they produced newsprint. Um, I might be wrong about that. I might not be remembering that correctly, but uh, um, they're obviously in a struggle too. I wonder. Um, students, of course, have been a big part of uh, the business in this town, and. Uh, I don't have a sense for how many students are gone right now with the campus being remote learning only for spring uh, and possibly after that. Um, but of course, if they're not in town, they're, they're just gone. I mean, they, they could still order some things online, but it wouldn't be food, uh, it wouldn't be restaurants. I know, yeah, my niece uh, goes to UC Davis and she's back home in Roseville because it's safer to be in her own room than you know sharing a room with close quarters with other roommates. So um, I think a lot of them are doing that. Uh, a lot of uh, students are, have left if, if they can. And I guess my point is that's gotta be a particular challenge for some of the merchants, particularly, or the restaurants that have been very student focused. Um, and that observation has been made before that a lot of the restaurants in Davis really aim at the student market. That's, uh, it's a large market um, and um, uh, it isn't, it's a different market perhaps somewhat than the folks who live in town year round. Um, and I would imagine that's probably an area at greater risk. Yeah, I, I think what we can do is try to keep up our, our habits of if we went and got coffee or if we went and you know got sandwiches at Zia's all the time or whatever it was, we should try to keep that up and you know, even though we can't go relax and sit in the restaurant and eat it, eat it we if we can maintain that we're at least doing our part of what supporting how we did before yeah i'm wondering uh you've mentioned actually something that could answer this question already but i'm wondering if you're seeing any positive trends among the city's merchants um you had mentioned a moment ago about the shop owner who said you know i'm going to build things for the future uh other things along those lines um i i do think they're adding more on it they're it's forcing them to take the time to have a more um, online presence uh, and delve into things like delivery. And but I, they're also just trying to survive. I, um, yeah. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, they can do that. It's it, you know, there's some pretty strict. Uh, there are there's a lot of things available to them with these some of these new loans, but um, there's a lot of restrictions tied to them so i don't know how well, you know, I, I was going to ask about the loans uh you know i think de i'm by no means expert on them i think details are probably still emerging but if i understand the part of the idea of the small business loans that'll be coming out of washington 
is that they're forgivable if uh, you know the the recipient meets certain conditions. I take that to mean that basically it's a grant um, if you use the money in a way they consider you know supporting the economy and responsible. I guess as opposed to simply yeah. and running. And if you, like if you're not if you don't lay off your workers, but if you don't have work for them, there's a, you can only string them along for so long, and then. I was just talking to a contractor who said, um, you know, they're, you know, you're forced to go to your bank first for those loans. And, you know, his bank was, was trying to sell him um, or saying that there were these other benchmarks that they had to have a, a, a credit card with that bank first and all these, you know, and, and also contractor where he can't, you know, there's he can't start new projects right now and so he's it's so he wants to be able to do one of these forgiven loans but he's not sure he's going to be able to qualify uh, if yeah anyway okay. it's so, it's tough so the help might be available but uh, not necessarily in a format that actually works for some folks right. but i'm wondering if there's anything maybe we haven't talked about yet that um particularly alarms you uh with regards to what you write about in Davis. Um, anything with, that we haven't covered yet that, that people ought to know? I think we've covered a lot of that is, you know, I think what alarms me is the negativity and the automatic, um, everybody's automatic mindset to just go to the big businesses that they know, like you know, shopping on Amazon. And I mean, I shop on Amazon too, but, but you know, I, try to be deliberate and it and I'm trying to be stay uh, positive and empathetic to the situation yeah uh, you are sort of a business yourself I mean you're a freelancer uh, in the sense a lot of freelancers are businesses um, uh, what do you what's your own experience in that regard what are you hearing maybe from you know some of the people that you uh, work for or do work for well i've um i've actually been busier for a little while i do i do um i i do some work for uh the davis farmers market doing press releases i do uh i so right when this started there was a lot of press releases for that there's press releases about events changing i'm doing work for the um, Davis Pride Festival and the Cherry Blossom Festival, and those both had to be uh, postponed. So I had to write press releases about that. Um, so I've been actually busier uh, than usual, putting in more client hours than usual for those type of things. Uh, maybe, but that uh, eventually might not be the case. But um, it's well, I, yeah, I guess that's the question is, I mean, so much of the impact of this will depend on how long it lasts and then what happens afterwards. Uh, and I don't, I haven't seen anything that strikes me as reliable. You know, um, you hear things like, well, the, the peak might be in mid-May, but, you know, in terms of the effect here, but then what does that really mean? Uh, do you then loosen up a little? This is getting way beyond what I know. Uh, right. Although uh, I will say that KDRT has the COVID report uh, twice a week at noon and five with uh, mm -hmm. Autumn Labe Renault. She's and, doing uh, a great job. She's putting a lot of information out about that as it goes, and I'm sure there'll be, be more there. Um, yeah, I think it's encouraging that the, uh, well, the um, UC Davis has, you know, put out an announcement that they're, it's not laying anybody off, but it's, it sounds really good, but it's only through the, um, through this fiscal year. So it's just through the end of June. That's not a very long promise. So my husband is um, a long time employee of over 30 years employee of UC Davis. So that's. Uh, you know. I've seen the note as well. In fact, it says the uh, career staff. And of course, anybody mm -hmm. familiar with UC Davis knows not all the staff are considered career. That's There's right. Contract and things like that. So uh, yeah, well, that's that's part of the conditions that we're all in right now, which is frankly one of the reasons I wanted to talk with you about this piece of it, because it matters in Davis, right? It matters if our local businesses and retailers are, are doing okay, or how they're doing. Um, no one's really being doing okay right now. Uh, 
a general question. I wanted to ask, put a pandemic aside for a minute. There's a lot of things you could write about, a lot of subjects. Why, why do you write about business? Why do you make this your specialty? Well, uh, back when I was managing editor uh, at the Enterprise, we I'd see new businesses open, and I'd tell I'd try to assign it to a reporter. Hi, can you just write a quick brief, at least, or something that that this new business is open? People, you know, should know about it. And they're like, Yeah, yeah, I'll get around to it. And and then it just sat there. So, I I realized that an, um, this is something that needed to be that that people wanted to know and or I did anyway and so I was naturally curious and so I just decided to start collecting them in little bits and it when I first started it was just sort of whenever I had enough and I put them together as a column you know once a month or something like that and it, it kind of took off and um in popularity and and I got more and more tips and that kind of thing so that so it's been fun to write it's more I mean it's my um, yeah, I've always wanted to be a journalist and I always have been in some way right now. I'm more of a, it's more of a hobby, uh, almost, but because it just, it's just this column once, uh, in and now right now it's once a week, but it's not my livelihood by any means, but, but it is my, where my heart is in it. And the, the feedback I get from people is really valuable. Uh, and so, Oh. That feeds me more than anything. Um, my biz parents owned a, a small business, so I, uh, it's in my heart as okay. well. So yeah, it's a subject that just called out to you. And that sounds like a lot of newsrooms I've worked in too, where you know journalists can seem like you know we all think the same way, but not at all. I mean, there's some really drawn to science or sports or business, and a lot of others who aren't. And uh, you're one who's drawn to business. Uh, we're very near the end. Uh, I did want to mention you've got. Um, um, it's also visible, your, your show, show, your uh, column's also available online. Where can people find you on, on Facebook? It's just comings and goings um, okay. uh, on Facebook. Is, and, if, and, and if people want to contact you, they can contact you through that or also at the end of your column in the enterprise. Right. I, yeah. Email's preferable. Uh, the best is the best way to reach out to me. Uh, and the best way to keep track of what, for me to keep track of what I get. But um, okay. yeah, and uh, well, subscribe uh, we'll, to the enterprise. <laughs> we'll have to end it there. Wendy, uh, Wendy Weitzel has been our guest today. Uh, thank you very much for appearing on Davisville, Wendy. I appreciate it. Thanks, uh, I, I'm Bill Buchanan. This is Davisville. Again, it's a different kind of recording, so we don't have music at the end, but we will be back. Thank you for listening.